Hi there. I'm Carice from Schofield Farm and I am looking forward to chatting with you today about my plans for my spring summer garden and the different types of seeds I am planning on starting again. Things I want to repeat from last year, things I might change up and just go over a variety of vegetables with you today. I suggest grabbing a cup of coffee or something to drink and just getting cozy, maybe taking out some notes if you are doing some seed shopping. Hopefully I can help you with my review of some different things I've grown and what I love and what I want to definitely repeat. Now, I'm gonna start with showing you um, some of my garden plans. This is from last year. I took graph paper and I just sketched out some of my garden beds and I wrote, um, planned you know, basically what I had room for. I put how many would fit because I am someone who likes to start a lot of different things and I have to be realistic with how much room I actually have to grow. Even going through my seed choices this year and going through my different boxes, I'm looking at what realistically do I have room for? And if I don't have room for it, even if it's something I'm really interested in, I might have to wait till later. And that's kind of a hard reality of you know, growing with a certain amount of space and loving to try all sorts of things. I want to start today with tomatoes. I love tomatoes. My family, we have seven kids. We eat a lot of tomatoes, even just fresh in the garden. Not just cherry tomatoes of all kinds, but all kinds of tomatoes. You'll find one of my kids out in the garden just eating like an apple. So I tried a lot of varieties last year and last year was actually not a good tomato year at all for our area. I talked to other local gardeners and it was pretty much a consensus. I think maybe because of the combination of the drought, a, um, a late start to the heat in the spring, but then sudden heat, a lot of people had poor production, including myself. So I'm not gonna talk about every single variety I tried, I'm gonna more focus on my favorites and I might be trying some of the other ones again this year but since I don't have a fair review I think I'll kind of leave those to later. The ones I do love and I want to start with cherry tomatoes. When you pick what kind of tomatoes you want to grow you need to think about what your family will use and eat and what makes most sense for you personally. Some people grow lots of cherry tomatoes some don't grow any. Some people grow a lot of tomatoes for canning. Some grow a lot for fresh. Some grow a lot of hybrids or determinants, which determinants are when they're all ripe at the same time. Others grow a lot of indeterminants to have fruit all season. And maybe they like heirlooms. For me personally, I have found such an attraction to heirloom tomatoes because I'm all about flavor, colors, textures, varieties. I'm finding this year, I'm probably going to give more room to hybrids simply because I would like to start canning my own diced tomatoes and doing some tomato sauce. And I don't feel like my heirlooms are productive enough to cover that by themselves. So I will be having to pare down this year on my heirlooms just to make space to try to have some more determinants, to have a big harvest at once, to have more hybrids, that might be hardier with our harsh weather and to have more um, paste tomatoes. But starting with cherries, because I will always make room in my garden for cherries, especially having kids. One of my kids' favorites is Barry's Crazy Cherries from Baker's Creek. We have grown these for four different years. They will be a staple in my garden forever simply because they have huge clusters of fruit. They're a milder, low acid variety. So if you have a hard time with the acid of tomatoes, this might be a good pick. Actually, all yellow tomatoes seem to be lower in acid, but my kids love them. They eat them like crazy. And since they're so fruitful with seven kids, it feels like it makes sense to keep these in my garden. They also do really well with our heat. They don't seem intimidated by our super hot summers. Another cherry tomato that I absolutely love that actually is a hybrid is the Sun Gold. I love orange tomatoes. It seems to be the bright, 
sweet flavor that I crave from a tomato. And Sun Golds often are sold in smaller packages, like this one is only 10 seeds. And it's simply because um, it is a hybrid. It isn't the same way of being able to save seeds. You rely a little bit more on a company, but I found these to be such a huge one for me, like um, both productive, but also in flavor that this is one I definitely have as a go-to. Another one I love that is a hybrid is the Super Sweet 100. Again, um, I have a yellow tomato. So it's actually, I, I noticed colors, a yellow cherry in the berries, crazy cherries. I have the sun gold that represents the orange and I have the Super Sweet 100, which represents the red. These are great. They're very productive. My kids love them. They have a very traditional, sweet, um, farmer's market type of cherry tomato flavor. The other one that I don't have seeds for here because I bought it at, as a start the last several years from my friend Robin is the black cherry. Black cherry is one I just can't go without. I had a hard time finding seeds last year. Hello there. But um, this year I did find seeds um, early from Seeds and Such. And so those are in the mail on their way here for me to start more plants from seed than just the one start I bought last year. So those are my four favorite cherry tomatoes. I did grow a um, red currant spoon variety of cherry last year that was a super productive, pretty little plant. It actually was so productive, it started crowding out my black cherries. It liked the heat, it liked the environment. For me and my family, I didn't feel like my kids were eating the tiny cherry tomatoes as much as it made it worth it to pick them all when they didn't produce um, you know, a large quantity. There'd be like hundreds of them in a little tiny bowl to actually do a lot with in the kitchen. I was thinking of them more as a snacking tomato. And since the kids prefer these other four, I think this year I'm gonna stick with these four as my cherry tomato choices. Now in summer of 2022, I actually grew tomato in five different garden beds and in two external um, garden large pots. So as I said, we do make room for tomatoes. Um, one tomato that I love that will be a repeat in my garden from years past that I did not grow last year was Chef's Choice Orange. I already have the seeds on order from Seeds and Such. And I'm looking forward to having those back simply because they are a hybrid. So they seem a little hardier, but they're a hybrid of um, one of my favorites, a mono orange and another tomato, which I'm blanking on right now, but it makes it actually a lot hardier. However, I am still going to grow a mono orange, the heirloom variety, which is just absolutely delicious. Um, you'll find I like a lot of orange tomatoes. I love the Kellogg's breakfast. This one, my friend and I have done um, little taste testing parties, well, parties, she and I, where we test a bunch of tomatoes we've grown. This one is always one of our very favorites for flavor. I'm also going to grow again the green zebra, which last year was my first time growing green zebra. I didn't find it as productive as I hoped because as I said, all my tomatoes didn't do that well last year, but the flavor on these was phenomenal. So I am giving these a spot and I'm giving them time to talk about because I was very impressed by these last year. Thorburns, I, Thorburns? Thorburns terracotta. It is absolutely delicious. This is ranks up there in flavor for me. Flavor is always something I'm looking for. Um, I love, love, love. Okay, this might, if I picked favorite tomatoes, even though all the orange varieties are always a hit for me. Black Crim was the first heirloom variety I ever grew of tomatoes over 13 years ago. I think it was actually 14 summers ago. I bought a start from my friend Robin and her husband, John, and I loved this rich, just, oh, it's so savory flavor that even though it's not my most productive tomato in my garden, it is one I grow every year because it is just so unique. Um, Black Beauty. 
Now I am drawn to a lot of these purplish varieties. This is one of the darkest purple tomatoes you could grow. It is delicious flavor. I don't even know how to describe it, except it's so rich and, and um, it's just so meaty and flavorful. And it's a great one. It's also very pretty in your garden. The plant itself has kind of a purple tinge, even in the leaves and stuff. It's very beautiful. Paul Robeson. This was one of our taste test winners as well. Me and my friend loved this flavor. It was so delicious. Even just slicing it in chunks and putting salt on it, it is such a good tomato. This is like a tomato sandwich or a caprese salad winner. Um, Cherokee purple. Again, I, I like a lot in the purple family and in the orange family. This one's another rich one. This is one I could just eat for lunch. Um, you'll find me throwing basil, little mozzarella cheese balls, and tomatoes in some balsamic vinegar and salt often for a salad in the summer just for lunchtime. This is one that I had in there all the time. And then another favorite of mine I've grown for years is the Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato. They're so cool. Look how they're like tie-dyed. It is a little difficult to know when these are ripe because the colors change a lot through the season. I do more of the squeeze test where I feel when it feels the ripe feeling of um, other tomatoes where you can kind of press it in nice and soft. I love these tomatoes. I am a, I'm a huge fan, but um, a friend of mine who loves tomatoes does not love these tomatoes. These seem like more of a controversial one, not in like a bad way, but in people are very undecided is if they love it or they hate it. And for me, I love it. It is one I go to for my salsas. I make a lot of fresh salsas with tomatoes and I love to have a lot of heirlooms represented, including this one. Um, last year, a friend of mine locally gave me some seeds um, this is the mini orange tomato. This one did very well for us while our other tomatoes seem to suffer. So I will be repeating this one. Now they're not the size of a cherry tomato. They're more like mm, about that size. I would say a little bit bigger than a Chadwick cherry gets, um, but it was very fruitful for us. Also the taxi tomato, this is a small determinant and we loved it. It had a lot of yellow tomatoes all at once. The branches were kind of hanging low, just packed with tomatoes. I'm gonna grow more of these and maybe even use these for um, some of my, my paste kind of needs. Those are the ones that I would probably say are some of my favorites. I am gonna grow a tomatillo this year. I bought from Redwood Seeds the Tomatillo Verde. Tomatillos. You want to make sure you at least have two plants in your garden because they are not self-pollinating. They need another plant. So that's a note to make. Um, I am going to try a lot of paste tomatoes this year. I'm going to try Roma, some different kinds of Roma, one called La Roma that um, a local gardener friend swears by. I am going to grow Amish paste again and um, San Marzano. That's another one for me, okay? So many people, when I ask... Um, if people have, you know, a type of paste tomato they like, so many people love San Marzano. For me, it is the only tomato I've ever had blossom and rot with. Everything near it was fine, but San Marzano seemed to be affected. I don't know entirely why. I will try it again because it does have such rave reviews, especially from gardeners in my area of it being productive, even in our heat but I'm not sold that it's going to be my favorite paste tomato. I'm kind of betting on that La Roma that another local gardener loved and said was productive. So we'll see. I have other varieties of tomatoes I am gonna try, but as I said, this year I'm really focusing on concentrating on being able to produce ones that are good for preserving and then also good for you know our snacking needs and our, our daily needs of tomatoes. But I want to utilize space well so I might be trying other varieties in a limited fashion and we will see how that turns out. I'll probably share with you more later when things are planted, what I ended up going with. Okay, so as I put tomatoes, <laughs> as I put tomatoes aside, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to move on to summer squash. I'm pretty simple when it comes to summer squash. I do zucchini and I do a yellow summer squash. Um, 
these zucchini seeds, these are just a dark green zucchini and my friend actually found them for me at the local Dollar Tree. They have grown great. So don't knock Dollar Tree seeds. Now, just a reminder, a lot of you probably know this, all seeds sold to home gardeners are non-GMO. So although these are not organic and most of my seeds in my garden are organic, um, most of them are heirloom or open pollinated so I can save seeds, these have grown just fine for me and produced a lot of zucchini. My favorite yellow squash is called Max's Gold. A couple years ago, I traded a um, extra rooster we had with a local gardener homesteading friend and she wanted to give me some different starts to grow my garden and the Max's Gold was one of them and I fell in love with it. It was so productive, it outproduced my zucchini. It was so flavorful and whether I harvested it small or I harvested it um, you know, really large, it kind of got away from me, the flavor stayed buttery sweet and it was delicious. I've actually had a couple of local friends grow these because I was such a big fan and they've had good experience as well. I will also include carrots in my planting in the spring. I've had mixed results with carrots, so I don't have one favorite variety I love. Um, I do direct sow them. Sometimes I remember to put insect netting over the top or even an old mandarin orange or onion type bag that is like a little netting to help them get established. We have a lot of birds that eat a lot of direct sown seeds. Some I have tried and liked, um, just a rainbow variety from Lake Valley. Sustainable Seeds had a tender sweet that had great flavor. Um, I had a Nantes Scarlet, a short and sweet. Um, I'm still looking for the perfect carrot. And also, as I said, I feel like you are like a successful gardener when you can grow successful carrots consistently, because strangely, that's been a tricky one for me. Um, also, for me, lettuce is a winter, early spring crop. But I found these seeds from Redwood Seeds. It's called Mayan Jaguar Lettuce. I did an experiment last year in the garden with growing these in the shade of my cherry tomato plants in the absolute hottest time of the garden. I started them indoors, transplanted them. I did get small heads and they actually did pretty good at not getting bitter and I'm talking about triple digit solid temps, sometimes in the 110s, these did okay. They did bolt earlier than they would have in the spring, but I got a couple salads and I was glad about that. Lettuce just never is going to be my go-to summer crop though. And that's where it's important to understand where you live because where you live really determines what grows well in what season. You've got to get acquainted with your zone and you've got to get acquainted with your climate and you've got to get acquainted with your micro microclimate. Going to microclimates, I'm going to talk about onions and garlic for a second because there's something that we harvest in the summer, but we actually plant in the fall here. For garlic, I plant both soft neck and hard neck. I found a sheet from back when I first bought my seed garlic from a local nursery and my um, soft neck is simply an early white. My hard neck is a Spanish Roja. And I have um, saved seeds from them over and over and over again to plant a new crop from my harvested crop. And so, you know, I didn't even know if I remembered what type of garlic, but we grow over 200 heads of garlic in our garden. I use them as a border around my garden beds. Um, I love to interplant. I will talk about interplanting more in a, a later video. I love the variety, um, the colors, the textures, the heights. I love to throw flowers in there, but also it's great for pest management as well and maximizing space. So garlic and onions, I grow on the borders of my raised beds. The types of onions I grow, all of them are from Save Seed from our past harvests. Um, I grow a white bunching onion. I grow a red burgundy onion, a yellow sweet Spanish, 
And I also have grown Ailsa Craig, another larger sweet onion, similar to a Walla Walla. And um, we have always let some bolt and go to seed, save the seed, and then we start the seeds inside in like a lettuce tray um, with a bunch of seed starter in it in like August, plant them out as little, they almost like blades of grass in the fall. And then we harvest those all summer long. Um, I harvest at different times with onions because I find they're ready at different times and the garden is a great place to keep them if they're not ready yet versus trying to harvest early and find a place to store them. Next, I want to talk about snap peas and snow peas. I love both my peas from Redwood um, Seeds. Sugar snap peas and Oregon giant snow peas. These are out in the garden right now. I might sow a few more in early spring and these are done by summer. So, but this is kind of the now time that I have in my garden. Let's move over to chard. I don't replant chard over and over. I just did replant some chard in the fall. Rainbow chard's my go-to. This is also redwood seeds. And um, chard for us is a perennial. It lives for, I mean, I have some that are there for several years. And as long as I pick off the bolting part, it will produce year round over and over and over again till it's a huge bush. And sometimes I'm like, you know, it's time. I want something else in this space, but not because it's done producing. They are very productive. They're my go-to for green smoothies. I saute them, I put them in stews. We love chard so much. Um, I'm gonna just bounce over back to our nightshades. I'm gonna talk about eggplant. I am a big eggplant fan. Lots of people are not. Eggplant are one of the prettiest plants. They're one of the most delicate flowers that you'll ever see. They almost look like the tutu of a ballerina kind of hanging off. And I know some people who grow them um, ornamentally for their beauty. We really like eggplant. The two eggplant of choice for me are the Black Beauty, I got these at Baker's Creek, and the Ping Tung. It is a long eggplant. Now the way we use them is different. These long skinny ones, we like to slice and saute or um, do over the barbecue grill. These are often a side for our Sunday dinners. The um, Black Beauty, I'll roast in the oven and I'll scoop out the soft flesh and I'll make an Indian eggplant curry, which is just one of our family favorite meals. So these for us, um, you know, some people have one or two eggplant bushes in their garden. I last year had 12 and we ate all of them. So we love eggplant a whole lot. I always say grow what you love. If you don't love it, maybe grow one ornamentally or to share with friends and family or to sell. Um, but if you do love it, make space for it. Make space for the things that your family will eat. And if you don't love eggplant, don't make space for it. Make space for the other things. Gosh, all this talk about seeds is getting me really excited. I'm getting really excited about starting seeds again. And I actually have a couple things I could start indoors in January for our area. I could start my super hot peppers, which I have an entire 55 minute long video all about peppers. I am a pepper farmer. I call myself a spicy gardener, <laughs> but um, I'm really excited. I can start some of those. There are some other things. I might start ginger inside pretty soon. I did grow ginger last year semi-successfully. I feel like I need to start it earlier. Also, another one I want to start earlier, I tried last year um, from a seed swap, I got Lufa. Lufa was one of those things I got from someone late spring, threw it in the garden, direct sow, and it got big, beautiful vines, but it just didn't have enough time to fully develop the fruit. So I'm hoping if I start them indoors and transplant this year, they will actually um, be more likely to be fruitful because I'd love to have our own homegrown sponges. Another thing I start indoors, and I might start soon because I can plant these out right now, are beets. I tell you guys, I know so many people like to direct sow beets, but it doesn't work for me. I direct sow them. I even did it this fall and I'll get a couple that survive, but the birds, we have so, so many birds. I mean, not just our chickens that like to sneak in our garden, 
but so many different birds that will fly in. And um, some of them are like, I think like little wrens and they will just take any direct sowed seed like that. So I will do these in module sewing inside. Um, I learned this from Charles Dowding, watching his YouTube channel. And um, I love the Chioga beets or Chiogia. I'm probably am butchering that. I love Detroit red beets and I love any type of gold yellow beet. I like to have all three. Um, I started liking beets by juicing. I know they are incredibly good for um, a, women, a woman's body and I would drink the juice when I was pregnant. I love roasted beets. I like to roast, cut beets up, roast them, salt them, and then I like to throw them in a caprese salad as well with my tomatoes, basil, mozzarella, um, balsamic vinegar, and salt. They are just, ugh, they're like candy to me. So I love beets and uh, my family likes them okay, but they are my personal special treat. I also keep kale growing um, all year round. I just sowed some kale in the, in the fall. So I am probably not gonna sow a lot in the spring or summer. I might start some. My two favorite kale varieties are red Russian and dino kale. I have about six varieties out there, including a Siberian, a dwarf Siberian, a frilly one, but I always kind of go back to those two as my very personal favorites. We like kale chips, we put them in smoothies. My kids love this kale salad that's just kale, olive oil, salt, um, lemon juice and shredded Parmesan cheese. It's super simple. One of my kids actually asked for it as a birthday dinner. So that shows you we personally love kale. I hear all the jokes about kale, but as I said, grow what you love. It's something that is definitely worth making room for in our garden because it grows year round as well. Something I have not done well in my garden with are watermelon. I have tried to grow the little um, personal size uh, sugar baby watermelons. We have too big of a family for those. So I switched um, this last year to crimson sweet watermelon. This is the first year I feel like we actually were successful with watermelon. These are from Redwood Seeds. They have several different varieties, including one that is a yellow fleshed watermelon. My kids would like me to pick up seeds and try. We will see. Um, I love watermelon. I'm like the type of mom who would hold off from buying them at the grocery store because, oh guys, we have them in the garden. Then the aphids also loved watermelon and they would attack my watermelon over and over again. And I, several times I had to just pull the whole plant. Like I couldn't do it anymore. Um, I don't use sprays. I don't use chemicals in my garden. I really like to keep it as natural as possible and, and you know, um, encourage the the natural predators to come get the pests, but I couldn't keep up with watermelon so many different times. So this year we switched the spot entirely and it seems like the best year. I'm hoping that we can do it again. I hope we can replicate because they are really so cool to grow at home. Now, while we're talking about watermelon, I am not crazy successful with, I actually have been very successful with cantaloupe, which are related. They're another melon, but I don't know. Um, Heart of Gold, is a kind I like. It's a pretty common variety. It has done great for us. Um, we eat them for breakfast. We get lots and lots. I think the key to growing good melons and good squash is good compost. You want to really feed your soil so your soil can feed you. And we have focused so much the last several years on really getting our soil health good in um, making our own compost in making sure that we're putting good things back in the soil. And I was advised this about four years ago, maybe five years ago by a local gardener who had off the charts butternut squash harvest. And I said, what do you do? And he said, compost, compost, compost. So that is what I've adopted. And it has really helped us with cantaloupe and helped us with butternut squash. And speaking of butternut squash, butternut squash is one of my favorite things to grow. I actually, um, not in 2022, but in 2021, we harvested well over 50 butternut squash and we eat them all winter long, all fall long, all spring long. Um, 
I found a lot of recipes I like, but our go-to we always go back to is butternut squash risotto. I love to saute some sage, kind of like a brown butter, and then put that on top, all crispy and crumbly, and it's just such a good pair for butternut squash. The butternut squash we use is the Walton butternut squash. I know there's a lot of varieties out there. This has been consistent for us. I might branch out and do a different one some point, but we are gonna grow these again this year. We also, in winter squash, like to grow um, spaghetti squash. We are a gluten-free family. I have three kids who cannot have gluten, and I am not about to make two separate dinners um, every evening. So um, spaghetti squash is a great substitute for noodles. Gluten-free noodles are very expensive at the store. So I love when we can do a spaghetti squash during the summer and make a nice meat sauce to go over that. Um, oh goodness, one of my favorite things um, I've only had in my garden two different years are pumpkins. If you get to know me, you will learn I am a pumpkin fanatic. I'm one of those people who like everything pumpkin and I know some people think it's overrated, but I do things with real fresh pumpkins. I do not buy canned pumpkin at the store. I do not buy pumpkin flavoring. We make our own pumpkin spice syrup at home with real pumpkin that we roasted. Um, one of the first things I learned to pressure can was pumpkin because we have on our shelf right behind the camera like 14 big Cinderella pumpkins waiting for me to use and process them. Um, we grew these gorgeous Cinderella pumpkins from redwood seed over an arched trellis this year. It was a cattle panel trellis I had put up intending it for my spaghetti squash. And I just remember years ago seeing a, um, a friend of mine, she had pictures up on social media of growing these pumpkins hanging from arches and I thought, oh my word, I want to do that someday but I didn't actually purposely plan to do pumpkins over the arch this year. I don't know if I forgot that somewhere. I was gonna do spaghetti squash because I do butternut squash and cantaloupes over arches. But lo and behold, my spaghetti squash decided to ramble and my pumpkins decided to grow over the arch and to have these huge, beautiful pumpkins just dangling. Oh, it was like a magical fairyland. And anyway, I have a white Cinderella pumpkin that I saved seed from that I'm going to try this year along with my orange Cinderella pumpkin. We have grown pumpkin um, from, we had this giant pumpkin that someone gave us just knowing we had chickens and that I love pumpkin. And I was gonna give it to my chickens and when we were cutting up the flesh, one of my kids bit into it and said, this is so sweet. And usually oversized pumpkins are known for being stringy and not Great flavor. So I saved those seeds and we grew them last year and got more very delicious pumpkins. So I am probably going to start a giant pumpkin this year as well. Um, pumpkin is something that is just so fun. You grow them in the summer even though they are considered a winter squash. Butternut squash you grow in the summer even though it's considered a winter squash. They are ripe in the fall but um, they're they like the climate of the heat. They actually are frost tenor, so they die from frost. The reason they're called winter squash is because they store over the winter, and the summer squash are thin-skinned and don't store over the winter. They're more perishable. So that is why they're called that, but you actually grow them in the summer, so I have to plan space for those because they are a must grow for me. Okay, another veggie I love in my garden, I think everybody loves in their garden in the summer, cucumbers. Cucumbers, I have three that I um, I grow. I grow the Boston Pickling Cucumber because I ferment salt brine, all of our pickles, and these do great. I have the Bait Alpha Cucumber that I started last year for the first time. These are great slicer cucumbers. I have pickled them as well. Um, they don't seem to get bitter in our heat or if they get larger. They stay thin skinned. They are quite delicious and productive. And I also do the lemon cucumber, which we love these. These are one of our favorites. I make a cucumber salad with them. I pickled them, we eat them fresh. 
just with salt or with hummus. These are um, a special little treat and usually very, very productive in the garden. The bees love them. Um, I like to interplant radishes throughout my garden. I do try them in the summer. They do better in the spring and fall. I have all sorts of radish seeds that I have saved. They're actually a really easy one to let bolt and flower and to save seed from. And we have eaten the pods, the seed pods while they're still green. They are delicious pickled. They have a nice peppery flavor, just like a radish. I know people who grow radishes just for the pods. They don't like the root. They like to let it bolt, flower. They have the little pods hanging and they eat all of those fresh. If you let them get brown, you can harvest the seeds from them. And so it's a very, radishes are very sustainable. They're very, um, they have a short period of time till they're ready to pick. It's usually about three weeks. We can grow them in the winter. Winter, since there's less daylight, it's usually more like four, four and a half weeks, but still um, we like pickled radishes. It's one of our very favorite things to ferment our radishes. They are delicious. We just ferment them whole and they're just like these crunchy, yummy little pickles. Um, next, oh, I wanted to mention too some different greens that we grow. I do sow greens in the fall, but here usually all the different kinds of greens um, are still harvestable in the summer. They're kind of a year round thing until they do bolt. I do like to save seeds from greens. I have Mitsuna, I have Tatsui, I have collards. I have Japanese mustard, um, all sorts of fun, different greens that aren't chard or kale or lettuce. Um, I just think it's good to have lots of variety, both in your salads um, that you saute, that you have in your smoothies. Just um, greens are so healthy for you that if they grow well in the garden, I'm gonna always have some represented in the garden and they're very easy to save seed from. Okay, I think we're going to end with beans. I was not a super successful bean grower, except for these long noodle beans that I got from my local friend, Tracy, and she had saved seeds from the previous owner of her house. I saved seeds from what she gave me. It's kind of like a great seed saving bean. They are long, productive. They're the kind of noodle beans that are just like a foot long, and then all of a sudden, you know, they go from edible to huge, um, what it'd be like swollen pods like that. So you have to keep up on picking them. I found that in our region, um, pole beans do the most fruit in the fall. So if I plant them too early, like in the late spring or early summer, I have aphid problems. I actually took a year off in 2021 from growing these, um, these long beans because I was just done with dealing with the aphids. But in 2022, I direct sowed them um, very late summer and I got the produce from them without as much aphid headache. So that is what I'll do again this year. The other pole bean that I have been successful with that was new to me last year, I'm gonna say this wrong. I think it's the Blahild. Um, I got this from Baker's Creek. It's a beautiful purple pole bean has very pretty flowers. It's very pretty over an arch trellis. Um, again, pole beans are more productive for my region in the fall. I planted them a little early and I felt like, wow, they just aren't going to fruit. They were full of flowers and still not fruiting until the temperatures mellowed off a little bit in early fall, I started to get fruit for them. So I'm probably going to plant those a little later like I did the long beans this year, just so I don't have as much pest pressure. And um, so I'm not so disappointed with um, taking so long to fruit. Okay, 2022 was the year of the bean for me. I ordered all sorts of beans, specifically bush beans, because I was determined I was going to be successful. In the past, I had tried to grow some bush beans that people said were very fruitful for them and they didn't do well for me. So this last year, I experimented. I think I grew, oh goodness, maybe eight varieties, seven varieties of bush beans. I will tell you what they were. 
and what my favorites were. I grew Roma 2, Tongues of Fire, um, Provider Bush Bean, Blue Lake Bush Bean. This one's Blue Lake 274. Um, I grew the Golden Rocky Snap Bean, Jade Bush Bean, uh, Jade Bush Green Bean, and Dragon's Tongue. And I would say the ones that I felt like were the most productive for me would be um, both of the, the pretty uh, multicolored ones, the Dragon's Tongue and the Tongues of Fire. I don't know if I could tell a difference in flavor. One was yellow and purple. The other was green and kind of a pinkish red, but I did like them both and I will do them both again this year. Um, I just ordered a lot of provider bush bean seeds because they did well for me and I would like to can and freeze bush beans this year. I am not sure. We love um, fresh green beans sauteed um, with salt and garlic powder, but I, um, I don't know if we like my kids like fresh canned beans because I haven't grown enough to ever can them. And some people told me they might like them frozen better. So I wanted to experiment this year where I can some, I freeze some. Obviously we're gonna eat them with our family of nine, fresh like crazy and find what we like. I did like all the other ones. I will grow them, a lot of them again. Oh, also I won this really cool giveaway on Instagram with my friend Kelly from In The Trough. And she has some really cool heirloom beans that I want to do. I'm actually super excited. Um, I think all of them could be dry beans, which I have not experimented with growing yet. This one is a Calypso bush bean. Um, it is so pretty. Oh, well, I'm not gonna open it right now, but it is, um, looks like a fun one to try. A Hidatsa red bean, a Mambo, oh, I'm gonna butcher these. Mambomba green bean a good mother stallard bean, and a sacre bleu pole bean, um, which is like a blue, really pretty blue kidney bean. So I will have to get reviews of these when I have tried them all. Um, as I said, my family really likes beans. Ironically, I have one kid who cannot eat any dried beans. Um, he seems to do okay with green beans, so, the dried beans would mostly be for the other ones of us, but I'm excited to learn. Um, I, gosh, I hope this was all helpful to you. I, as I said, I am growing some varieties, especially of like tomatoes and stuff this year I did not mention. I have a whole entire video about peppers because I grow like over 30 varieties of peppers. We are in love with peppers. But I just wanted to give kind of an overview of what I'm looking at for this next garden season. I'm going to be starting seeds. I always grow extra because I sell my extra starts because I want to make sure I have enough for my garden and it, it just doesn't hurt ever to plant extra. And then you can share your extra starts with other people. I used to buy starts as the only way that I gardened for years. For years, I did not start seed, except for like the direct sow root veggies. Um, I actually would direct sow kale and stuff, kale and chard. But for the other things like eggplant, peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, I bought starts for years and years from local gardening friends. So there is no shame in buying starts. I love to share seeds with you because I'm excited about seeds. I love that it makes gardening more affordable and that you can grow more. Um, but, you know, there are people like me who are selling their extra starts and probably really close to where you live as well. So please let me know if there is a variety we talked about today that you might wanna start in your garden. In the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. Um, try something new. Try something that you've never tried. Grow a lemon cucumber try a different kind of pole bean, grow that bush bean that you always wondered about or 
you know, maybe try a different kind of green in the garden, an Asian green. But I'd love to hear from you what you might try. This is the perfect time to plan your garden. This is the time to buy seeds. Be looking in seed catalogs and the website and talk to friends and watch YouTube videos and get excited because it's going to be such a fruitful year. I just know it. I'd love to keep taking this journey with you and thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you haven't seen my video on peppers, I encourage you head over there, watch it. I talk about a lot of varieties and details and just some advice for growing peppers in general, since that is one of my very favorite things in the garden. Oh, and look back there. There is one of my um, garlic braids from this last year's harvest. So that's a fun thing with soft neck garlic is you can braid it and it's decor in your house and then we just cut them off and eat them. All right, take care. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.